Hello again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video, I'm going to be machining a bunch of reasonably heavy section steel parts and um, on Slant Pro. So it's going to be called Slant Pro Setup and Run. I'll take you through from the beginning, uh, modifying a chuck, setting it up with the tools, and machining these fairly big section parts. I mean, they're big section for Slant Pro. They're not big section for an industrial CNC lathe. Um, they'd be medium parts. But for Slant Pro, they're big parts. And I'm pushing it right to its limit, and finally beyond its limit, and getting some inf interesting information. So it'll probably be two or three videos, um, so they don't get too long-winded and boring. So I'll run the part now, the end result, uh, just quickly, you know, sped up or with bits clipped out so you can see where we're heading with this Slant Pro machining job. just got a little production job for Slant Pro out of some 70 millimeter steel discs, vaguely this shape but a little bit longer, and I'm just thinking should I uh, machine up some soft jaws to grip these parts well, or should I use an existing 5 uh, inch chuck and just modify the jaws in the reverse position so that they have a little bit more capacity and they're a little bit more versatile. And I think that's going to be more useful in the long run. It'll be quicker in the, in the short run and it'll make it more uh, versatile. And you know, you might be thinking, yeah, but the pro proper Taylor soft jaws is going to be much more powerful and rigid in a six inch chuck, you know, much more securely held. And, and although that's true, it's horses for courses. The Slant Pro is a very light duty lathe that can only take light cuts doesn't have a high power, high torque spindle. And given that I can only take light cuts, a reverse jaw and a five inch chuck will be more versatile and useful and in scale with the type of demands put on it. And will give more clearance for the turret and gang tooling as well. I need to take about three millimeters off these case hardened jaws in order to get the clearance to clamp that size part. And that doesn't really uh, lower the lower the versatility or accuracy of the chuck in any way so why not do it i might as well take off about five millimeters so a good way to do that is with a uh, surface grinder uh, with a with a uh, wheel designed for hard steel a uh, diamond dress and you can what they call plunge grind um, over a big area and remove hardened metal very quickly i'll just show you that now It's got the advantage of coolant and uh, you just come down to contact, coming in contact there now, set my dial on zero. This is just a manual surface grinder. So I'm just plunging down in about 1,000 steps and, and within a few minutes you'll be down 5 millimeters. So the coolant keeps it cool, a big surface of the wheel cuts efficiently, the type of wheel breaks down the little grains and exposes new sharp grains of aluminium oxide so that it 
keeps cutting fast and cool. So this is a really good use for a surface grinder, plunge grinding. Just in about that one minute or so, you could probably see the step appearing. Not far away. Now I've set the jaws up, two up. You can, you can hold two parts in a vice like this, I'm sure you know. The jaw floats and clamps both of them. Um, and I'm grinding the 45 degree angle. Plunge grinding by the same method. So I'll flip it round now, go to the same number on the dial, grind the other side, and uh, go to the same depth on the dial and do a traverse cut because it very slightly wears the middle of the wheel with the plunge grinding. The traverse cut cuts with the sharp edge on either side and gives you exactly the same dimension. Not that it's critical, it's only clearance. So there we are, that's the modified reverse jaws there. Um, that'll be quite a versatile, useful uh, five inch chuck with reverse jaws. Five inch is quite nice on the Slant Pro. It gives a lot of clearance around the turret tools and the gang tools. Um, there's less room with a six inch and you can hold quite big parts with reverse jaws in a five inch chuck. Um, I've cut a little bit of a ground, a little bit of a chamfer on there as well, just to give a bit more clearance and um, that looks like quite a nice proportion. You can see there that a 5 inch chuck is really good for clearance. See the gang tooling drill is clear of the jaws. It wouldn't be clear on a 6 inch chuck. So um, you can only have so many gang tooling drills or boring bars down there uh, for this larger work using a chuck. So that little chuck has good clearance from drills and turret tools. Here I'm setting up the tool offsets. So you can see this eight turret tools and two gang tools. And that's about as many as you can conveniently fit on this machine for most medium sized work. So here I'm setting up the drills and there's quite an easy way to do that. If you have a, uh, a piece of uh, diameter split in half set concentric in the three jaw chuck. You can touch up on the side of the drill um, and uh, dial in the diameter here on the tool touch table. So you just touch up the uh, flat on the side of the drill and uh, I'll, I'll just quickly do some of that now to make it a little bit more clear. Okay there's a couple of tricks to this. So there's eight tools in the turret so this is tool 9 and this is tool 10. So we enter tool 10 and we then jog over. Now the first thing I do is jog to approximately the center. It doesn't have to be exact, but this helps you to get your plus and minus values double checked. And then come over here and enter 0. Enter zero on that DRO, on the tool touch DRO. Now we didn't do that exactly, but now we can index down. And along. And back up. I'll do this exactly off camera to save, save you time, but when it's just touching there, we can then set the diameter because we've measured the drill and we know that it's 17 millimeters and we can set the diameter which we only set approximately there but that tells us that it's a minus value so we set the diameter when the tool is touching on that half round we set the x diameter at minus 17 millimeters or whatever the drill diameter is that tells us that it's minus and not plus so there we have tool 10 set on the diameter and this is a good way to do it because if you work off the bore if you work off the bore here don't forget when you tighten up your screws as I've explained in other videos um, it pushes it off center it racks the whole drill off on an angle because these aren't precision fits and you could be quite a few thou out 
you know, you could be uh, you could be five or ten thou out, but this way gets it very close. So you're just touching on there, you know the diameter, and you enter that in there, and there's your tool offset on the X. And it's a good idea to jog it to zero and do a quick double check with whatever setting gauge you're using, the half round or this type of setting gauge, just to check that you haven't done something horribly wrong. Thanks for watching this series, guys. Catch you later.